<laughs> okay, so this is the first story that we have up. This is interesting because it's a video. I tried to find the text of this, and it was really difficult, and I couldn't find the text of this. So I'm not going to share the audio, but this is a uh, Bruce um, Aid. I don't know. Uh, anyway, he's. They're talking about the recommendations for standards of the professional committee. I'm trying to find the fast forward button. Honestly, I may not have it. Where's the fast forward? I don't have it. All right, so we're gonna have to wait until he gets to the section and then I will pause it so that you can see the proposal. But basically, the National Association of Realtor is changing the standards that talk about ethics and how you deal with other uh, people, specifically protected classes. And right. instead of just relying on your professional standards of practice, like exactly what you do, they are now adding uh, text that will include what you say. And not what you say to oh. one person, but what you say on your social media. Yeah, and not necessarily as a realtor. Like when you take off your realtor hat and talk about something else, they want to govern this essentially, right, Ray? Correct. And he makes this statement. Let me hear. If, let me see if I can hear the exact statement he's making. It's pretty low audio. It restricts a realtor and any disciplinary action under the code to a realtor's real estate related activities. And the proposal is going to have the realtor be subject to disciplinary action under the code with respect to all of their activities. Oh, so that, um, all right. So brings up good points already. Wait, Joanna Holland's laughing at us failing. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Thank but, you, Joanna. But Christian, Christian Harris says, so thought police more like first amendment infringement. All right. So yes and no. So the first amendment applies that anyone can say whatever they want. But if you're a member of a company or professional organization that you don't have the freedom of speech within that organization as representative of that organization, they can fire you or get rid of you for what you say. So yes, you can say whatever you want and you're free of any kind of criminal action uh, for the most part. Right. But they could still fire you. And that's, that's the big change. Right. Now, now I, I have to admit that every one of the examples, there was this video and there was one other video that the guy actually gives like real life examples. So it has the disclaimer and, and we're not going to say that here, but right. like here, these are actual offensive phrases that I'm going mm -hmm. to say. Every one of those phrases that he said, we would fire an agent who said that for our company. They are abhorrent. They are horrible. Not yeah. one, not, not one was like, well, maybe no, they're right. all really, really bad. Right. And I, and I think almost everyone would agree that realtors as a whole need to raise the standard. 100%. Right? In, in every aspect, who, who we are as people and who we are right. as agents. And we all think that's a good thing. We, I think, as realtors, don't think it, that anyone that's a racist or a self-proclaimed racist would be a good addition to the realtor name or organization. Even if they practice real estate in a way that is non-offensive or not um, <laughs> racist or not, you know, even if their practice of real estate is fine, if them as people are coming out and saying these egregious things, and they, like I said, they gave real world examples of some realtors that have said some things. And I think we would all say those people don't need to be realtors anymore. They don't need to be associated with our professional organization because they are not professional and their beliefs inside them would lead to actions of racism, bigotry, homophobia, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Right. And now that's just, that's currently how we sit. That's just a blanket, but you know, and Ray is a, is a broker. Yep. Uh, so if these things came of light, if these complaint complaints came up, in an instant fired because they're right. under your umbrella. You can let them go. They're not acting in line with what pixel properties yep. represents. And that's and kind of, that goes along with being a realtor. That goes along with, I mean, anywhere, if you work for Google, if you work for, you know, Walmart or whatever, if your actions do not represent or misrepresent what they stand for and how they believe you should be holding yourself, they can fire you. 
Right. And, but, and we and we would because we also have an agreement with those agents that holds them to a higher professional standard in doing business and outside of business. And so we we ask them, hey kitty kitty, we yeah. ask them, the audio listeners are like, what? Yeah. <laughs> We ask them to be professional on their social media platforms. And it's not like I'm looking at all their posts every day. But if we get a bunch of complaints about some kind of post, then we can take a look at that and say, eh. okay, but this is where we need to be careful because if they govern it, you want to get to some comments because there's, yeah, yeah. there's, 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 there's great comments coming in. Michael Elizabeth Rodell says military has rules that govern on and off duty behavior. Lots of businesses have rules as far as off duty behavior, but unique with agents since we are technically independent contractors. Now we are independent contractors, but we've all agreed to a membership with this professional organization. Right. And under my brokerage, I'm protected because I pay my dues and E&O insurance and all that stuff. Yeah. So still, I am an independent contractor. I make my own hours. I work my business. I promote myself the way I want to promote. But you are but I still represent yep. Remax Empire Properties and Remax as a brand. Right. And if so, he, and if Dan did something that didn't line up with Adam or Nick, then they could fire him. Yeah, uh, well, that's why I have him on the show. So I get a little leeway because it's like, <laughs> hey, you guys are on the show. So... Uh, Craig, hey man, thanks for thanks for watching the show. I haven't seen you in a long time. Craig says NAR's membership would be decimated if local boards were not the owner of the MLS systems. Okay, so he brings up a good point along with uh, Dusty. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get both their comments and then we can. Dusty said, I think I think where the problem is looking at things long term, the NAR has constructed a monopoly in conjunction with the MLS services around the country. Mm -hmm. So while yes, they could kick someone out of their club and prohibit them from earning a living since it's almost impossible to sell residential real estate without NAR membership. Uh, so yes, that, so what you're saying is someone can still practice real estate. They could still spout racism and keep a real estate agent's license and practice real estate, but they can no longer be a part of Realtor. But the problem that Dusty says is that Realtors all have this multiple listing service and are working together to list these properties on the multiple listing service. And it creates a monopoly that someone who is a real estate agent who wants to exercise their racist freedom of speech, um, they can now not participate in the business of which they are licensed for. And that would be an interesting suit, I think. And it may dismember the MLS from the board long term, but I don't know that this is the thing that will do it. Um, well, yeah, there's a lot of things that'll... <laughs> right. This may not be the one, but this one is the slipperiest of slopes. Right. Um, Christian Harris brings up a good point. He says, NAR doesn't have the teeth for their code of ethics. They are a special interest lobbying group, not a regular body. Uh, not that I think it's okay to be a horrible person and say terrible things. Right. I love I think that. That's the, disclaimer that that's the disclaimer that nobody in our audience has to give. We understand that you're not racist or terrible, right? But, uh, but this is this issue of taking away the right to say something terrible. Is that okay? Well, within an organization in which we all agree, and this is why it's a proposal, because we all have to vote on it and agree to it, or our representatives have to vote on it and agree to it. And if they do, then we all as realtors agree that to be part of our club, you can't talk like that. Um, and that's and there's also something in this that makes it happen immediately. So immediately as this resolution is passed, it's enacted. There's no wait. Um, Dusty Martin says, and what's worse, there are no standards for uh, or barrier to anyone and everyone making claims, valid or otherwise. Now, they did say that whatever claims there were would be under scrutiny pretty heavily, um, that it would okay, have to right. be provable and verified and that there's a time limit on all ethics complaints. I think uh, they have to be like 180 days or something from the time that they happen. But so they, they say like, that they're just not going to nine days ago. I know. Right. So they say that they're not just going to take someone's word for it. They need the proof and, and people are going to have their, I guess you could say they're going to have their day in court. Um, but okay, let me, and I want to come back to, uh, because there's two more comments and I want to come back to, but this is where it gets a little scary because then you get into the, you know, there's an election going on, but the big government versus little government thing. And this is a big government-ish body. It's a lobbying body, but they would be 
governing all of what we all do and kind of mm -hmm. taking it out of the hands of the local brokerage, even though Remax is a worldwide brand, biggest name in the business, by the way, uh, yeah. right, right behind it with pixel is right behind us. Um, <laughs> but, uh, even though there's still local brokerages, our brokerage is called Remax empire properties. It's taking it away from, so if, if something in the media or something on social media happened, where I said something yeah. horrible and my brokerage decided not to fire me, they would have to put up with the backlash of not firing me. Yeah, that's a good point. It, 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 that, that's they almost would have to fire you even if it was questionable. Right. So it it's now taking it away from the going to an, a larger national scale where how are these things going to re be reviewed fairly? Am yeah. I going to be persecuted, prosecuted, persecuted in the media? Oh. Am I going to be you know, guilty until proven innocent kind of thing. Like that's where it can go really, really horribly wrong. And the thing I, I do like about this is they're trying. If you watch the other video that Ray mentioned, yeah. um, it's just all about making us better, right? You know, and it yeah. kind of stems from the, uh, what we brought about um, John Legend speaking at the NAR conference and all that stuff. It's kind of from that. And it, it is like, let's just be better. But yeah. to make it so blankety like this, could be really really dangerous especially since we have i don't know the first amendment that's pretty important <laughs> so you're leading right into these next comments christian harris says the association fine an agent or boot them from the organization for code violations but then they just go to another firm that aren't members at least in seattle area where we have choices oh that's interesting where since the mls does not require a realtor membership Right. And that may start to happen as, as a result of this, too. So I want to be racist. I'm going to go to Seattle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dusty right. Martin says, all I'm saying is that the First Amendment has to protect all speech, even the vile speech. Right. That's how freedom works. Awful people, as much as we don't like it, have, have a right to be awful. That's true, but a company or organization is an entity in itself. And they don't and have to allow it. But then again, you can't force an entity to agree to something that is that they don't or to do something they don't agree with well that used right. to be what we said until they started making people bake cakes for weddings that they didn't agree with now they have to so maybe you can maybe yeah. um uh dusty martin says but it's open to interpretation today's cancel culture anything and everything is offensive uh so pretty much he said seattle has a racist history that's interesting starbucks so so i have a question have you though. looked at the logo it's so okay but yeah, yeah ask your right. question then i I'm just kidding. Uh, ask your question, then I want to make a point along with what uh, Dusty was saying. So in, in the examples they used, all the speech was egregious, and we would all look at it and say, that's terrible. All of and us. yes, that person should not be a part of the Realtors Association. But what about speech that's on the fringe? For so instance. That's, that's there, where I wanted to go. There are people who are men that believe themselves to be women, transgender, right? Or transsexual. I don't know the difference. All right. There are also people that believe that that's a mental issue and it's a mental health issue and it's a serious mental health issue. Is that person hateful for not agreeing that this is a, this is a lifestyle choice or, or in a, in a mental issue? Or is that, is that hate speech because they have a moral code against that? Or is it not? Um, there are some people that don't agree with gay and lesbian lifestyle. As a matter of fact, there are some religions that don't agree with a gay and lesbian lifestyle. I live with only gay and lesbian people. <laughs> if they came out against that lifestyle. I'm not. I just only live with them. I love them. <laughs> if they came out against that lifestyle, would that then prohibit them from being a realtor and deemed as hate speech even if they didn't believe it was hateful so that's um, where i i think it gets let me say one more thing yeah pendulette is a um it's not agnostic he's an atheist he's an atheist and he said something that i'll never forget he said if there was a christian believer uh, because someone said don't you get frustrated with all these like christians coming up to you and saying pen i'm praying for you i hope you become a believer and Penn said, no, not at all. He said, right. if, there's a, if, there's a, if there's a person that is a believer that thinks that if I don't believe, I will die and go to hell, and they don't tell me, in that case, it's more hateful 
that they don't say anything. Right. Because if they really believe that, then what they should do is let me know. Yeah. They, they believe a thing that might be true. <laughs> yeah. And he said, so for him, whenever someone says that, he, he thinks that's loving. Now, he doesn't believe that, but he still sees that differently. So in, the, in today's, going back to Dusty's point, in today's cancel culture, if a realtor comes up and says that, then what's, what's going to be the case? Yeah, what's going to stop them from, you know, so to me, like, I, I, I understand it. Now, when I'm driving around and I see signs up of this and that, and, you know, uh, uh, religious stuff, I just go, I, and I just turn, I just don't look and I just drive through the intersection. But like, what if someone had an adverse reaction to it and walked up and said, stop forcing your beliefs on me and your signs on me is, and, and they're a realtor. Is that now grounds for dismissal because they disagree with what those people are putting in their faces? Like, yeah. If, that, if Dan, and, if Dan came out against religion, oh, I have many, many times. Is that now hate speech because religious is that's a protected class? Yeah. Well, what if I just say I don't believe what you believe, and now I'm in trouble? And I think that, even though I feel <laughs> way more along the lines of what yeah. Penn said, I. Yeah. I, anyone wishing me well and putting good vibes out into the u universe, which I believe is praying and asking for good things and help and please guide me. Yeah. That's a good thing to me. More good and positive and energy. You know, they're not, uh, uh, God, please kill this person. <laughs> like, hopefully, they're not putting those vibes out into the internet, but any good, anything yeah. that someone believes in their head and it's making them put off good energy. Yeah is a good thing to me. And if they want to send more good energy, vibes, prayers, thoughts, whatever my way, I'm a big fan of that. I agree with uh, Penn on that one. But what if I just, I was having a rough day and I was like, you know what? Get your signs out of my face. I don't want them. Now am I, even though they started it, am I having the issue? And they're not realtors, but I'm a realtor. What, what do we, what do we do there? Nar. What if, Someone was not pro-life and they said, Hey, if you abort a baby, you're killing it. So that makes you a murderer. Is that hate speech now? Or is it vice versa? <laughs> like I know. There's, there's so many issues. Um, and of course they said that they would only, I'm going to say legislate. This is not the term they use. They would only le legislate hate speech, but hate speech has not been well-defined and hate speech is protected. The Supreme Court has upheld and said, yeah, you can speak hate. That's your prerogative. Now, no one has to use you for anything, and people can deny using your business, but you could do whatever you want to do. So that's when you're in question. someone else's business or someone else's organization, they have the right. I'm not disputing the right for realtor organization to police speech within the organization and the behaviors of agents that could impact how people see them as a professional organization. They have the right to do what they want. The question is, if they do this and start to set these precedences, what's going to, where are those lines going to be drawn that are iffy? And that's the problem. And Dusty brings up a good point. She said, it depends on the worldview of the decision maker, and that's the problem. Um, Christian Harris, that's always the danger. Who decides what's offensive? If someone makes a pro-Trump post, would that be hate speech because others interpret interpretation of him being racist or whatever? Yeah. yeah and this is a, a pro-Biden post, does that mean it's okay to smell children? <laughs> I said that. <laughs> Pete says, and agree with someone me. be upset about that and then get a realtor fired. Pete says, agree with me, whichever way the wind is blowing today or lose your livelihood. The wind, the wind blowing may well be farts. You must like it anyway. Okay. So uh, Patrick Ellis is joining us. He's probably under a house or in a, in an attic somewhere. He says, but still uh, joining us. So that's right. He's a home inspector. He says uh, 50 shades of gray area here. And one last comment, which I think is really important to get to. Dusty, when we were talking about Pendulette, says, I know he's agnostic. Also, fun fact, 
He spit a bullet shell into my hand once in Vegas. <laughs> Which that's obviously pre Rona. Uh, that's he says exactly didn't exactly. So I think wait, wait, wait. wait. I want to I want to clear up. I know we're going off topic here, but yep. uh, Penn Gillette commenting, I can you can find anything on the internet. So yeah, there's a post about it says to be an atheist, all you have to do is be able to say, all you have to do is to be able to say, I don't know. And then someone said, that's an agnostic. And he said, no, this is Penn Jillette's tweet from 2017, November 18, 2017. He said, nope, different subject. I'm an agnostic in epist. I don't even know this word. Epistemology. Uh, epistemology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Therefore, an atheist in theology. I don't actually believe because I don't know. So he. Interesting. Is an atheist, but he has a caveat. He has an asterisk on it. But yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> pre rona but still gross dusty said <laughs> <laughs> pre rona but still gross uh christian harris says uh, we just need to get rid of the idea of hate speech we have an amendment to write to say stupid offensive things as long we we have the first amendment and the right to say stupid and offensive things as long as it's not a direct call to violence yes yes you could I, no one's arguing that you have the first amendment right to say what you want but you also can't force an organization to accept your speech so right. here's somebody right. working for the Girl Scouts of America, and uh, they come out against it. women. I think you're probably not going to have a job at Girl Scouts anymore. But but you're you can you can rail against women anytime. But there's a consequence for it. So there's a really funny thing that's it's uh, awkwardly funny, not funny, haha. But uh, Girl Scouts posted for oh yeah uh, the new Supreme Court Justice. Jimmy they're Bunny the Girl Scouts. Yeah, hey, great job you know uh give just say all it said was congrats everyone railed against them what you're supposed to be this you're supposed to be that and they're like we're the girl scouts yep they took it down but instead what they did is they took it down and they kind of yep. apologized for it instead of just saying no dude we we stand we're supporting a woman that got a really cool job yeah we're the girl scouts this is our basic feature or our basic function, our main function in as an organization, as an existence is to make powerful, strong, confident women out of girls. And that happened. So congrats. And now, <laughs> and now, uh, and now, but you know, it's the same thing with, you know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's crazy to me, but so how I work is that if, you can say anything you want to me. And I think a lot of the problems are the SJWs and the and the the keyboard warriors and all the people feel free to say whatever they want and do whatever they want when they're typing, right? Right. You can say anything you want to me, but I will decide how I respond to you. Okay. That's just me to me. And that's little government stuff, right? So if I work for a local florist and I say some horrible things, they can fire me or keep me working there. That's it. Right. And then and then I either go find another job or my life is ruined because I say horrible things, but it was governed. It figured itself out, right? It wasn't governed by some big body that some national outcry decided, right? Because, yep. you know, because I'm pro Trump or I'm pro Biden or I'm pro Jorgensen. It was real interesting. I kind of got, uh, I was There's asking a third candidate. What? <laughs> what did you say? What Joe, Joe Jorgensen? Yeah. I don't know him anyway. Yeah. Just J O. <laughs> So uh, there was a I was I was talking to um, a black friend of mine. I hate saying that because people are like, "Oh, you got black friends." I was talking to a black friend of mine, and I asked him uh, because he was talking about hate speech and stuff like that. And he was like, "Yeah, you just need to get rid of it. A business shouldn't be able to say, you know, they hate black people or whatever." And I said, "Well, do you mind supporting a business that hates black people?" And he was like, "No, I don't want to do that." And I said, "Well, wouldn't you want him to come out and say, <laughs> like, so that you know, so that you could use someone else?" And then you just don't go there. And he cranked his head. He was like, oh, yeah, how would you know? I said, right. Like, I don't want to use anybody that's a member of the KKK and they cover up right. their faces and stuff. But if a, if a business says something racist, I don't want to use them. But if you say they can't say anything about race, be racist, then I don't know to not use them. Now, at the same time, you know, I, we both agreed, of course, that you should not uh, have racist practices or do anything within your business that's different. So we were talking about that kind of as a separate issue. But it was just kind of an interesting thought. Like, if... You suppress this speech and then you don't know who's saying it, but yet those people are still in your organization and it's harder to find when they're not overt. Right. If they're not using their first amendment, right. Then you don't know. And I'd rather just go, Oh, well, like, so the, the, you, you kind of mentioned the instance where they didn't want to make a cake for 
uh, a gay couple. Like, right. okay, I throw that all over the news and I just won't go just, there. But like them. force them to do something maybe that's against their beliefs. Doesn't that go against <laughs> our constitution? I mean, I don't know. That's where it just gets it should just be you vote with your wallet kind of thing. Like, okay, I don't want to go there anymore. And I support all people and I love all humans. So I'll just go to a different bakery and I might ask them, Hey, can you make me a, you know, a blue cake for my gay friends? You know, like, you know, like, yeah. I, I don't know. I, it, it just should, again, it, like I said, in my other example, it just, it will iron itself out and it'll police itself kind of thing. You know, yeah. Uh, Christian Harris says, yes, Dan, let the market dictate the consequences of people's speech and who and what they choose to support and align right. with. But they still get to say and do whatever they want, except for Nazis. Then we can punch them in the face. That's fine. Dusty but, says Joe's a girl. I know, Dusty. It was a joke. I, we know. We're joking. Yeah. Michael Elizabeth Riddell says, I just keep my personal beliefs off social media, but I think the lines are blurred and it becomes easy to make it so that going to rallies or church becomes offensive. Ooh, good point. I'm what actually... Are, what if somebody does go to a church, but not because people like to go there, but because it's the, always the biggest building in the neighborhood. <laughs> He's the nicest one. Yeah. Pete said, that's how we get segregation, self-selection, which is a big no, no. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. So, all right. So I think it's a, it's an interesting thing that they're proposing. It is policy statement. Number 29 It is an edit to that. And there's another policy statement in addition to that, that talks about the disciplinary actions that are taken Look it up. Uh, be sure you, uh, I guess there's a way to vote. I don't really know anything about politics as far as all that goes. So uh, Ryan Bocros could probably tell us what, what would happen. Um, but take a look at it. All of your activities are now going to be monitored by the National Association of Realtors. For the most part, 99.99% of you are going to be totally fine because we know you guys are professionals and not racist and anti-Semites, et cetera, et cetera. But... For the one or two cases in which someone has a moral difference in something that is now accepted in our culture, what is going to happen? And I think that is the bigger question that needs to be answered before it's just passed willy nilly. Along that blurry line, you right. know, that blurry line just is a pro Trump post racist, is a pro Trump post that is a pro Biden post that is it, you know, it's all up to interpret. If I, if I made a post about how a, um, a, transgender weightlifter who's a male broke the women's deadlifting record and how I thought maybe that's not right. Is that a hateful post? Have you guys read about the transgender rugby player? No. There's also transgender MMA fighters. That's all kinds of dangerous. Right. So, you know, that's where I think we got to go back to small town mentality. Just have your conversations with your friends and, you know, stay off Facebook. Is that what you're saying? Stay off of Facebook. Just it, I, it, I would recommend leaving Facebook if I were you. Yeah. It's pretty awesome.